you already out, so I'm gonna react to um Kendrick Lamar getting sued. Kendrick Lamar is the people's champion, or at least that's what Jonathan Emil thought before he would have to face the worst setback and pretty much killing of his entire career. Damn. It's 2011. Kendrick Lamar is still not really Kendrick Lamar and is quite reachable. And that's exactly when independent Canadian Lamar. music artist Jonathan Emil, who was also a fan of Kendrick, decided to reach out to him for a feature. In 2008, an 18-year-old Freddy Villanueva was killed by police in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. It would be the spark for Jonathan Emile's song Heaven Help Them, that would release in 2009 with lines like, When a cop dies, we're all mortified, but when a cop kills, he don't need no alibi. He wanted to re-release the song, polish it up, and with his own words, quote, add a different dimension to it, and reached out to Kendrick Lamar. I asked Kendrick Lamar to be a part of the song in the fall of 2011. We didn't really have any relationship with him at the time, so we basically cold called him and sent in a random email to his management asking if he was willing to collaborate. They said we would need to pay two installments, and we agreed. This was before Kendrick Lamar was even signed to Interscope. Top Dog told Emil, Top Dog is the CEO of Top Dog Entertainment, which is the record label that originally signed Kendrick Lamar. And he told him that Kendrick was feeling the song and was cool enough with the beat, subject matter, and the collaboration. The business would be two payments, like we said, with Top Dog saying that the paperwork would be handled by TDE lawyers at Emil's cost. So he put together money for the feature, which was a couple thousand dollars. Mixed by Ali, the engineer, for Kendrick Lamar and TDE, sent him the sample of the verse after the first payment, and then the full song in early 2012 after all of the transactions were done. Emil wanted to follow up with lawyers to make sure everything was above board, but there was no longer any communication. He reached out to Kendrick's lawyer, Josh Bender, Interscope, TDE, nobody would reply. He even said that when Top Dog sent the final files for the verse, they didn't even give him the acapella vocals. The verse was even finished by Kendrick Lamar and sent over to him, but they told him that the legal department was different from all the other departments on the invoice and that it was going to be handled. Nothing was handled. Kendrick Lamar got signed to Interscope while this business was going on, continued to blow up, Schoolboy Q and Kendrick Lamar together. And we're now in January of 2015. Emil is gearing up to release a new album and wants to use the song with Kendrick as a single. Anticipating. By the way, speaking of cute schoolboy, comment down below what's your favorite um, song of his. A release on January 19th, he sent Kendrick Lamar's team a message two weeks ahead of time with the response Oh, I don't remember this happening. Why don't you just send me the song attached? which Emil had already done, multiple times. They had even confirmed they received it, but still, no reply. The days went by and another message was sent out. The song hadn't really changed from what they did in 2011. No response. Another email sent some days later, with no response. The Billboard article and interview with Kendrick Lamar was released, so he decided to push back the song, and he put it out two days later. We sent another email saying, okay, the song has been out for two days. You haven't been communicating. So we just tried to put out a statement that sort of goes in line with what Kendrick has been saying, you know? That's when the song started to go viral. And we still had very little communication. Usually we would get a one-line email. We'd write a paragraph, but they'd give us one-line email. We try to reach them over the phone, unreachable. But that day I did receive a phone call from a person who was pretty adamant about the fact that if the song stays up, Interscope was going to take it down. We paid for it in good faith. We tried to communicate, but the communication wasn't there. And this was done before Kendrick was signed to Interscope. So we don't really understand what the problem is. If you guys had a problem, we gave you weeks to let us know. Almost immediately after, he was phoned by Top Dog himself. During the call, Top Dog threatened that Interscope and Universal Music Group would take down the song. Damn, bro. Wow. Taking down the song is crazy. He alluded to possible legal action and took a highly aggressive stance. He also threatened that I would burn my bridges with TDE and that it was bad business for me to not listen to him. It's hip hop, so tough talk and bullying comes with the territory. I asked him why didn't he tell me not to release the song. He evaded. So I informed him that I had every right to have the song released and there was nothing I could do because it was live on the internet and scheduled for iTunes release. I proposed to remove the song if I was refunded, but Top Dog refused. I asked to speak to someone at Interscope or UMG. At this point, he became angry and yelled that he was, quote, the president of Top Dog Entertainment and he has the final decision. At that point, I said, okay, 
and informed him that I would act accordingly. He said, I'm the boss. He's, he's the king. He's, he's king of top dog entertainment. To my best. Also jack is shit. Trist. It wasn't long after, just a couple of days, and eight days total after the song was released and accumulated hundreds of thousands of plays on each platform, that he got the following email notifying him that he was, quote, infringing on copyright and had his song taken down on all platforms. He asked them if they were going to refund the verse and they gave him some metaphorical reply comparing verses to fruit that needs to be shared when it's made or bought as opposed to letting it get rotten over time. Even whilst going through this tumultuous situation, Emil's ideal outcome was still the same as day one. I would just like to see the song be out there and split royalties and recognition for it like we intended in the first place. For me, it's not about the money. The biggest thing for me is I was trying to make a song with a message, and I'm trying to do that now. So I'd like the song to be out there so I can represent myself, because it's not his song. It's my song. We own it. It's difficult to explain and put into perspective how much Emil lost in this exchange. Not just the price of the feature, but this song was really blowing up and would have been massive for his career if it didn't get taken down as fast as it did. This was 2015. The Billboard cover article that Emil's referring to is the following, with this headline, Kendrick Lamar on Ferguson, leaving Iggy Azalea alone and why we're in the last days, with the subhead, Kendrick Lamar talks to Billboard about his upcoming album, police violence, and more. Killing by police officer is exactly what Jonathan Emile's song was about in 2009. And if we take a look at Kendrick's verse on the song, Heaven Help Them, he raps, they all say the average black man only lived till 25, Pac died at 25, how many kids you know dead at 25, now that's life, I know 10, that's crumbling in coffins, dead as a doorknob, fresh out of high school, and couldn't find no job, went straight to the grave. It's crazy how the Grim Reaper in love with such tender age. He matches the entire theme of the song, which is black men dying young, police brutality, which was the massive topic of discussion in hip hop, as well as his billboard cover story, with Mike Brown being the biggest topic of discussion for months, and Kendrick even explicitly shouts out Jonathan Emil by name on the song. So this was the perfect time for a song like this to be released for Emil who's independent. Kendrick Lamar was hitting new heights as a mainstream rapper, the topic of discussion in hip-hop was police violence, and the theme of their song together was police violence on youth. That's something that you can't recapture when your song gets taken down almost instantly. So Emil did the last thing he could do to at least get his money back and prove he didn't steal the verse, which a lot of fans thought after it got taken down, and that was to sue. He filed a lawsuit on October 24th, 2016 in Quebec against Top Dog Entertainment, Interscope, and Universal. And it said the following. The plaintiff seeks from the defendant the amount of 15,000 after one of his song was, quote, taken down from social media, YouTube and SoundCloud by the defendants for two months due to their report that the upload was infringing their copyright. The defendants failed to contest the application. No specific evidence of monetary loss was made at the hearing. The Copyright Act does not require such evidence to be made. The plaintiff has submitted the court invoices from his lawyer totaling 1975. It's only after the intervention of this lawyer that the song was reinstated on social media. While the song was down and even after it was reinstated, it's clear from the evidence provided that the incomes of the plaintiff and his reputation was negatively affected from the false report of the defendants. The court ruled in his favor, partially because they just didn't show up or even address it, and he was awarded about 6,400 USD plus 5% interest. The song was reinstated and is available on Spotify and other platforms today, but they had to be re-uploaded, so all the old views, attention, and comments were gone. This was almost two years later. People had moved on, alongside the momentum, which is something you can't recapture. A lot of folks really did think that the Kendrick verse was stolen. He added that he lost the momentum to promote the song. We did what we had to do to get the judgment. And while they ended up getting the judgment, the momentum was long gone, unable to be replicated with the perfect timing, perfect place, and perfect collaboration to take Emil to the next level. Having never directly interacted or spoken with Kendrick Lamar, he decided to pen a public letter to him in 2017 after UMG tried to revoke the decision of the court case and take the song down again. He states, This is not an attack, this is not a criticism or an affront to your character. I truly hope you'll hear me out, 
And I also hope we can avoid our representatives seeing each other at our recently canceled court date in Montreal on March 28th. As an independent artist, we face challenges. One of the reasons I wanted to work with you initially is because you were a champion of independent thought, independent artistry, and independent of the industry. I won't pretend to know just how much control you have over your career or business, but I do hope that you'll read this letter and understand what the action of your team and label will do to independent artists. Top Dog later confessed to my lawyer, who signed a sworn affidavit, that he personally asked Interscope and UMG to remove the song because he felt disrespected. Still, your label, through its lawyers, has refused to honor the court's decision. They have continued the bullying and intimidation in an attempt to strong arm me. They have since filed a retraction to stay the execution of the judgment. After the judgment was handed down, I was phoned by your legal team and I was asked to enter into a settlement agreement. Of course, I cannot discuss any of these details. A day after sharing the first version of this letter with select media outlets for consideration, I received a phone call from the court informing me that the application to revoke judgment was withdrawn. Still, UMG has not signed the documentation to close the legal procedures, admit fault, and obey the court order. In essence, this reveals UMG will continue their legal action to undermine my rights as an artist, and by extension the Canadian Charter. By removing my song, TDE broke the law and set a small legal precedent for artists whose work is being silenced and censored. By silencing Heaven Help Them for whatever reason, artistic, business, or personal, you and your team have violated the rights of independent artists and broken the original contract exchange we had. Now, UMG will attempt to have this case thrown out. The special relationship that major labels have with YouTube, SoundCloud, and other services was abused. What TDE did opens the door to hundreds, perhaps thousands, of independent artists being compensated for false copyright claims made by major labels. As you can clearly see, the honor and integrity you represent as an artist is not being mirrored by the people who represent you. Never have I spoken ill of you, lashed out at you, or attacked you. This is simply because I truly believe we're not enemies or even adversaries, as we both fight oppression, injustice, and share our perspectives on the human condition with the world in our respective forms. I will continue to be in solidarity with you, but I will appeal to your greater sensibilities and ask you to honor our original agreement and hold your representatives to account. I can only hope you have this type of influence over these processes. To give credit to Kendrick Lamar, he seemed rather distant from everything that was going on since the beginning, other than recording the feature, and with this going to press outlets, either Kendrick Lamar saw it and told his team to fall back, or the more likely cases his label and team saw how much worse their perception would be, and in part Kendrick Lamar's perception would be, as the people's champ, if they continue to try and drag this on legally by any means they have to try and keep the song down. And if we're all being honest here, the first takedown they did was enough to decimate the traction of the song, as well as any indication that this happened, past a couple of days. The truth is, they got bad press for, what, three, four days, they allowed the song to stay up, and it was forgotten about. But had they decided to keep dragging it along in court, it would have been a case that people could follow. One of the small independent artists who was supporting the same causes that Kendrick Lamar was supporting, yet he was against the behemoth that is a major record label and one of the biggest rappers in the whole industry that's supposed to be for the small guy that's trying to take down the small guy that's sharing the same message as him when he already paid him for the feature. This is not the type of ongoing press that someone who's on Kendrick Lamar's team, or any artist for that matter, would want. Unless you're staying in about that paper when someone uses your music, which is completely understandable in a different story. Unfortunately for Emil, this never really ended well, kind of ended in a tragedy. For Kendrick Lamar, he continued to be fine, but this is something that happens all the time in music. It's just that we rarely ever get to hear the actual story, and this is probably one of the incidents where the upside to this having had stayed up would have been so much higher than all the other times we hear about a story like this. Okay, that's the vid. So yeah, bro, um, um... Yeah, bro. I never knew Kendrick Lamar was was getting sued, bro, by by um, what's his name, Jonathan Lamar. I never knew Kendrick Lamar was getting sued by anybody. You feel me? But 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 like, but like, on the other hand, like you know, like, uh, but rappers could get sued by anything, you know. Whether it's by like you know, like rappers taking another um taking. You know, like their bees or not even their beat, their like lyrics and all that shit. Any rapper, 
any rapper could get sued, you know. So yeah, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, you know the vibes, you're checking the yard.